All right, here we go. My name's Jeff Kay, and you're listening to episode 394 of the world-famous West Virginia Surf Report podcast. My ass. Yesterday I had to go to the grocery store real quick, pick up a couple things. I had to pick up uh, coffee. Uh, what was the other thing? <laughs> I feel like there were two main things that t- that Tony wanted me to get. Uh, what was the other thing? I don't remember. Coffee and something else. And then I picked up some ice cream. Got some of that uh, tin roof sundae or whatever it's called. It has peanuts in it. Fantastic. But anyway, um, so I had to do a quick run to the grocery store, and my car was uh, pinned in. It was blocked. Oh, hot dogs. That's what it was. It was, it was, they sell this specific brand of hot dogs that I like there. Can only get it at this one store. I don't know why. So, uh, coffee, eight o'clock bean coffee, hot dogs, and then I picked up some ice cream. So anyway, my car was blocked in, so I took Tony's car. It used to be my car. I drove that thing for a few years, and I ran the mileage up on it, driving back and forth to work. And um, so I drove it for a long time. Well, not a long time, but a few years. But I hadn't been in it lately, you know. I hadn't driven that thing in uh, months, you know. And even then, it's just every once in a while. So I I, I go out there. I said, I'm going to take your car to the store. So um, I go out there, and uh, I, I have to free fall into it because it's so freaking low. It's, like, so low to the ground. It's hard to even get out of. Like, I have a hard time getting out of that thing. I basically just, like, roll out of there, you know. Like, why is it so I mean, you're just, like, inches away from the road, you know. So I got in. Uh, I free fell into that thing. And then, um, of course, the mirrors are all, you know, they they're pointed in directions that make absolutely no sense to me. <sighs> but I can't touch them because she gets freaking furious. She, I mean, she gets furious if I mess with her uh, mirrors. So I'm sitting there, and for a split second, just for a split second, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm like, how do, I start, how do I start this thing? I don't see any button. You know, I'm looking for the button. <laughs> you know, and I see nothing. I'm like, ah. Just for a, I'm not talking about. I'm not saying I was sitting there for like five minutes going. I don't remember how to start this car. It wasn't that kind of thing. But just for a split second, I was like, "How do I start?" I was like, "Oh, I gotta dig something out of my pocket." I'm already like, in, a, in a, contorted in this like messed up car. It's like the seat's too close. It's like down on the ground. Totally uncomfortable. So now I gotta dig something out of my pocket. What is this? And, and I gotta insert. I gotta pop open the little switchblade thing and insert it and turn it. I said, like, "What is this? Like the 1800s?" That's what I was thinking. <laughs> it's like, what the? How soon you get used to something and get uh, out of practice doing something you do every single day? When I was driving that thing, it wasn't even that long ago. I wasn't I didn't even think about it, you know. Just pop in the, you know, pop open the switchblade, stick it in, turn it, take off. Now it's like, what do I do? What? How's this? How's this operate? Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, take something out of your pocket, you know. But anyway, but she hit a deer. I think it's a still a good car. I ran, I drove that thing, and I I ran the mileage up on it. And, uh, you know, and then we traded it in for, well, we didn't trade it. We traded uh, the other car that Tony was driving in for the uh, Honda SUV that I drive now. And she took over my car. She she drives maybe like five, 6,000 miles a year. She drives, she doesn't do any driving. on. If she does any long driving, she takes my car. And there's nothing wrong with it. She's, a, she's like paranoid about it. She thinks there's something wrong with it. She goes, I don't want to take that on a long trip. I said, what? Why? 
She's not, there's literally nothing wrong with that car. She has it in her head that it's like some old clunker. The thing was fine until she hit a deer. She broadsided some deer and jacked that thing up. I mean, it still has problems ever since she hit that thing. I am, I'm certainly happy that nothing happened, that she wasn't uh, hurt or anything. But the thing, it messed up the windshield wipers. The windshield wipers have never worked correctly since then. Now, right now, like she, we've had it looked at and they fixed it supposedly, but the thing's never right. There's something wrong with it. Like they, when they're in, when they're in the resting position, like if you turn them off, they come to rest sticking straight up. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't go down like a normal set of windshield wipers do. do. They're like sticking straight up in the air, they're like sticking straight up, pointing to the sky. So I'm like, what the? I said, do you drive this thing like this? She goes, yeah, what are you supposed to? I said, have it fixed, man. I didn't even realize it was like that. I mean, I haven't been in it. Um, I said, have the thing fixed. I said, they're gonna, she goes, they're going to have to like put a new motor in the thing and all this. I said, you can't drive it like that. <laughs> Whatever. I would, I'd be losing my mind. I'd be like, I'm not driving this thing like this. Look, look, look the hell. It probably wouldn't even pass inspection with the windshield wiper sticking straight up in the air. Also, there's lights on on the dash, like uh, yeah, like the, uh, the the tire pressure, even though there's nothing wrong. She says there's nothing wrong with the tire pressure. I don't know, but she said the light never goes off because of, uh, since she hit that deer. See, that would drive me insane, too. If there's a light on on my dashboard that's not supposed to be there, it makes me crazy. I can't, I can't drive around with the lights on like that. I can't, I can't handle it. So the windshield wipers are sticking straight up in the air. The uh, the, the 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 tire pressure light is on, and there's like some kind of notification that says tire pressure system needs to be serviced or something like that. It's on all the time. It says that. So that thing's all messed up too, all because she uh, because of this deer that she hit. So I don't know, and it, and it, you got to you got to fish something out of your pocket. You're wedged in, in into this car that's like inches from the uh, the pavement. Anyway, so quickly you go you you uh, forget, you know, you, you get used to something and everything else is just like what the. And I drove that car for several years, <laughs> like a couple years or something, and um and now I'm like what the. Uh, seriously, <laughs> people drive these. You know, I don't know. Anyway, God, I, I got there's so much there's so much pollen. This, this is pollen city up in here. I can't even breathe. I'm wheezing. God, I, I, I'm like I need I need my puffer. God, <laughs> I don't have a puffer, but it feels like my, when I take a deep breath, it's wheezy. Let me take a hit off this bitch. Hang on a second. Oh yeah, some of that good coffee, some of that good, good coffee. All right. Uh, anyway, so um, I went to the doctor the other day, uh, follow up, and uh, he told me my blood pressure was good, right on the money. I said, hell yeah, it is. And uh, so that was good. That was good news. And he also told me that uh, everything was good with my colonoscopy. Confirmed it. He said no problems. You know, the, it was just a polyp. You know, those are all. Almost always benign, and I said, "Did uh, did you get the results back?" He goes, "Oh, no, it doesn't look like the results are listed here, but uh, I wouldn't worry about it. They're almost always benign." I'm like, "I don't make me feel very good." <laughs> he was like, "He goes, I told you it was just a polyp." He goes, "I told I, I told I said, yeah, but you don't know. See, you you know, I, I know you're a doctor, and I, I know you've been." <laughs> Start arguing with the guy. I said, I, you know, everybody says, "Oh, you'll be fine." So how do you know that? You know, how do you know that? Everybody's telling me everything's going to be fine. How do you know that? That gives me no. I, it gives me no comfort, right? He's like, "All right, well, anyway." Um, so, so then he wants me to come back in three months. So I can't. He will not. He will not release me. It's just going to be. You know, I want to get to the point where it says, "All right, I'll see you in a year." That's what I want to hear. I thought this might be the time. He says, I want to see you in three months. I want to check, make sure you're not having any kind of side effects on that medication that I gave you. And I go, oh, God. 
So I'm going back in three months. At least I'm get, I'm making progress. I'm moving in the right direction. Everything seems to be good. But I had a scare. I think it was might have been the next day. He told me he didn't really get, he didn't have the in, in my records. He didn't see where the uh, where they sent that polyp off to have it analyzed. He didn't see that the results came back. The very next day, I think I think it was the next day. My phone rang. It was that. It was that. That center. That 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 center. That that place. That that where I got the colonoscopy. You know, it was that place again. They already called me once, like right after, and um, they told me if you don't hear from us, everything's good. That's what the guy told me. If you don't hear from us, everything's good. Um, so no news is good news. That's what literally what the guy said. That's what the doctor told me. And then they called me, and I was like, "Oh my God, this has got to be bad news. It's got to be. This has got to be bad news." If they told me they wouldn't call, the only re- the only time they would call is with bad news. And then they called. And they were like, "I just want to check up on you." Ha 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 ha. It was some girl, sound like she was like in uh, middle school. Are you okay? How you feeling? Ha <laughs> ha. They talk to you like a baby. Of course, I have a baby, so it's appropriate. But anyway. So I was like, "Oh my God, that, that they gave me a heart attack." I told you about that, but um, so the day after the doctor's visit, just a few days ago, my phone rang again, and it was it was that place again. I was like, "Oh my God, this has got to be now." This, I mean, he, this has got to be bad news. I mean, and there's no. I mean, the first time I dodged a bullet, but this has got to. So I answer the phone. Oh, hello, <laughs> I'm stressing. Hello? And um, it's the doctor. It's literally the doctor. It's not one of those girls. It's not one of the, it's not staff. It's him. It's the actual doctor who did my colonoscopy. And um, he, he said, hey, uh, you remember me? I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> be hard to forget. <laughs> you know, it's not every day that I get my ass, you know, they feed a cable in my ass and, uh, you know, and all this, and I'm, and I'm, and all that. You know, that's not a, not something I would soon forget. So he goes, "Remember, I told you that we had that uh, polyp removed." I said, "Yeah," and we sent it off to have it uh, have it analyzed. And my heart's pounding in my chest, pounding. It's like this is it. This is where they give me the news that's going to send my life off onto a different, just a whole different path. Everything's going to change after this moment. He goes, well, we got the results back. I'm like, oh, my God. Could you be more dramatic? It's like a buildup, like a dramatic buildup. And it's benign. I'm like, what the? Like, what the hell? <laughs> Why? I mean, if, if you're going to do that, I have no problem with I, It's nice that they call, especially the doctor himself. It's nice that they call and check up on you. And it's nice that they communicate with you. I like all that stuff. I have no issue with any of that. However, you have to manage people's expectations. If you're going to do that, say, listen, we'll probably call and check up on you. We might call and check up on you. If you don't do it all the time, I don't know. You could say, we might call and check up on you, so don't be alarmed. They told me the exact opposite. They said, if you don't hear from if if, there's, if everything's okay, you won't hear from us. And then they call me twice, <laughs> you know. And there's like messing with me. It feels like, I mean, they're not messing with me, but I don't know. It seems like they need to uh, fix their uh, messaging. You know, they they need to tell people, you know, we might call. You know, so don't get alarmed if we call. That doesn't mean we're just checking up. You know. So anyway, he goes. Uh, he goes. Everything's everything's benign. It was benign as I as I suspected. But uh, yeah, I just want to check up on you. How you. How's everything going? Everything you feel okay? I said, yeah, I feel fine. He goes, all right. Well, you sound. You sound. Did I wake you up? I said, what? No. <laughs> I'm in a state of shock. <laughs> uh, I'm still recovering from this. Uh, from from the phone ringing and and me seeing who it's from and all this stuff. God. Anyway, is is, is this thing ever going to end? Am I, am I ever going to get past this thing? Can I just forget about this dark chapter of my life? God, just keeps going on and on. Three months, I gotta go. It's, I mean, when I go back in there, it has nothing to do with the colonoscopy, but it's more doctor stuff. 
It's more stuff. It's like all, it's like a, it never ends. This is like one thing after another after another. So anyway, that happened. Um, on Saturday, the older boy and I went to see uh, John Fogarty up here at this amphitheater called, uh, it's called the Pavilion at Montage Mountain. Montage Mountain is a ski resort up here between Scranton and Wilkes-Barre. It's not far from our house. The baseball stadium's up there, too, where the Yankees AAA team plays, the uh, scranton Wilkesbury Rail Riders. <sighs> That's right, scranton Wilkesbury Rail Riders. So there's a baseball stadium up there, there's a ski resort up there, and there's a big concert menu up there. And sometimes, like the Saturday, there's a baseball game going on and a, and a concert, and it's like up the side of a mountain, it's, you know. There's one way in, one way out. And it's like, it becomes a traffic nightmare. In fact, I got caught up in that a few years ago. I, I, I'm i sure I was on here bitching about it. Tony and I were going to go to a baseball game. I think the Rail Riders were playing Louisville, which is the Reds' AAA team. And we were going to go up there. And um, I wanted to see, you know, I like I liked when the uh, Reds' teams come through here, or Reds' team, you know. It's triple A. It's it's a, it's good baseball. It's, it's a great, it's a nice stadium. It's fun, but anyway, I'm not too interested in it unless Louisville's playing. And uh, but anyway, they were playing, and it was a Saturday, I think. I think it was a Saturday. It might have been a Friday. I don't know, but it was the weekend, and uh, we went up there. We had tickets to go see them, and uh, we got caught up in some kind of concert. There was a concert up there, Jason Aldean, some kind of shit kicker country stuff. I have no idea. I literally don't know who he is. I mean, I've heard his name. I guess he runs his mouth a lot. <laughs> That's how I know him. He like says stuff that pisses people off. I don't know. I don't even know the details of that. I don't know what the deal is. But he was playing up there, and there was this massive crowd, and it was all... It was all a bunch of dipshits, like low. I don't know. It was there were people traveling in from out of state. I mean, this is like some kind of big deal, I guess. There are people that came in from out of state. The place was like oversold, is what I heard. They did, and um, there was a traffic nightmare. It was unbelievable. We got caught up in it. I mean, it's a direct shot. You, you take this road. I don't know what to call. I don't know what road it is, but you, you get off the interstate. And you just make a right. This road goes up the hill, up the mountain, right? And and then you turn into uh, you turn into the baseball stadium. That's first. You go turn left into the baseball stadium, and, um, and but then if you go past that, the uh, concert venue is at the top of the mountain. You know, so everybody's going the same way. There's all this baseball. It's, it's fireworks. I guess it's Friday night. I don't know. I can't. It doesn't matter. But um, they're having fireworks at night, so they always draw big crowds when they have fireworks. And then there's this this shit kicker concert up there. And um, so we, you know, all you have to do is drive up the drive up the mountain, make a left into the parking lot of the baseball stadium, or go past it and turn, make another left higher up into the uh, parking lot or across the, you make a right I guess the parking's on the other side of the street or something I, you know anyway it doesn't matter it's past it you go past it to go to the concert everybody's heading in the right in the same direction and so they got this thing coned off so you can't go up the hill you can't go up the mountain the normal way they make you turn left and go up this big loop that loops all the way around and comes down the same road from from the opposite direction so it's this big, long curve up past uh, Cinemark, you know, the theaters, the, the big theater up there, and all these, the shops at Montage, and all these office buildings are up there. It's like far. I mean, it's like, I don't know, maybe like a two-mile loop around this thing. And it's bumper to bumper, and it, there's all these phony cowboys out there, these, these, these kielbasa, these local kielbasa eaters. You know, these guys are like uh, from Nanacoke, you know, uh, they're from Archibald or whatever, or, or, or whatever, Duryea or whatever, <laughs> but they're they're like wearing cowboy gear, you know, they're wearing cowboy hats and boots and shit. 
And, um, you know, everybody's drunk. They're all drunk off their ass. They're just, like, hooting and hollering, hanging out the windows. The the traffic's not moving. It's, like, it's just gridlock, just complete gridlock. There's people going up in the woods pissing, you know. I don't, I don't it's, it's a complete nightmare. I'm like, what the, 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 there are so many people up on that mountain that the, that frickin' <laughs> your cell phone wouldn't work. Like the whole network was just shut down from over demand, you know? Like I had no, Tony and I had absolutely no uh, connection. I mean, it was like our cell phones, you may as well be holding just like a rock. You go dig a rock out of the creek, hold it in your hand, and, and it'll be exactly the same thing. Thing served no no purpose whatsoever. So, uh, so I was, I mean, I was like, I was, I, I was bitching up a storm. And um, we finally, we, it, it took forever. I mean, it took forever. And it was obnoxious people. I mean, it was kind of fun watching the dipshits, you know. But, uh, you know, it, it was, I was getting infuriated by the length of time that it took. So we finally get all the way around the loop, and we finally get into the parking lot of the, uh, of the baseball stadium, and it's the sixth inning. That's what we, and we left really early. I was like, I think there's a concert up there. We should leave early you know, in case we get caught in traffic. And we, so we left our house early, and it's not even, you know, and um, I mean, ridiculously early, right? So, uh, and we get into the stadium. It's the sixth inning. Also, our our tickets were on our phones. Our tickets were on our phones. Our phones would not function at all. So we had to go to the ticket window and have like they had to look it up and print us paper tickets, like it's like it's nineteen seventy two, you know, and um, it sucked. I, I was like furious, you know, and um, you know they get they were, they apologized over the loudspeaker and said everybody that came to the game would get. You know, free tickets to a future game. I'm like, I'm not, the only time I want to go up there is if Louisville Bats are playing up there, you know. I mean, I like it. I'd go if, if like, if Steve said, hey, you want to go to a Rail Riders game? I'd say, yeah, I'll do it. You know, I like I like going to baseball. But for some reason, I don't ever go up there unless Louisville's playing. But anyway, um, so they gave us two, I think they gave us a voucher for two tickets. Never used it, you know. So that that was a nightmare. So I had that in the back of my head, and um, this this show started at seven thirty on Saturday. It's John Fogerty, some band called Hardy Har. Well, I've never heard of them. George Thorogood was the second opener. George Thorogood and the Destroyers. Never was a fan. Tell you the truth. I mean, it's you know all that bad that bullshit. I can't. That kind of makes me mad. <laughs> kind of makes me angry, but anyway. Uh, so I, I you know, uh, so they were the second band to play, and then John Fogerty, who I love. I mean, how could you not like John Fogerty? I mean, he wrote all those Creedence songs, sang all those Creedence songs. Love that guy, and he hasn't really. He's a weirdo. I don't. I don't know what his deal is. He's been. He tours. He's been touring here and there throughout the years. It doesn't seem like very often, though. But every once in a while, you go out on a tour. But he, for a long time, he wouldn't play Creedence songs because he had some kind of grievance. He had a Creedence grievance, <laughs> and um, so he was like, uh, he didn't own the rights. He didn't own the publishing rights to his songs. Some other, I don't know. He signed some kind of bad contract when he was young, or something. I don't know. There was all kinds of bad blood. He would he would refuse to perform any of those songs. So he'd go out and do his solo stuff. I, I don't know. I don't. Even, I can't remember ever having an opportunity to see him because I don't think he toured very often. And when he did, it wasn't. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I don't remember ever having an opportunity. I don't remember having an opportunity to see him and turning it down. I just don't remember ever having an opportunity to see him at all. But he got somehow recently he got the the rights back to his songs. And uh, he was going out on this big world tour called the Celebration Tour, where he's just going to perform Credence, you know. And I was like, "We got to go to that." 
I was telling the older boy, he loves, the older boy loves Creedence Clearwater Revival. He he knows more about them. He knows those songs. He knows all those albums inside and out. He knows more about them than I do. And, he, and he's like 27 years old, you know. So uh, he goes, yeah, we got to go. I said, well, this is, a, if he's anywhere near us, we should go. I mean, the guy's like 77, but I've read that he still does a great show. And he's doing all those old songs. Like, he's never really performed those, really. I mean, every once in a while, he'd, I don't know. He's, some, he's weird. <laughs> he's a strange dude. But this is a rare opportunity. He's going out on this giant tour, and he's going to do a celebration of those songs. It's the celebration tour. So then the list of, of dates come out, and there's and there's and he's playing right here. He's playing a few miles from our house. <laughs> Like shit, we get this is an absolute. I mean, one hundred percent slam dunk. So we bought tickets immediately, and um, you know, so we went up there. But I had this like concern in the back of my head that uh, we're gonna get caught up in a mess, just like we did, you know, at that Jason Aldean shit. So we left massively early. The older boy was like, "I don't know about this. Seems like kind of stupid that we're leaving so early." I said, "We're gonna get stuck in some kind of mess up there." You know, I don't want to get I don't want to get caught up in that. So we got up there, it's like no problems. It's like no, I mean nothing, no major problems, no major traffic. So we go to the parking lot and we sit there, and everybody's out there throwing frisbees around. Everybody's drinking. There's tailgating out there, and um, and we, you know, sat there and listened to the Reds. The Reds were playing uh, the Cubs. Listen to that game till the final out, and then we walked up the walked up the mountain the rest of the way. You know, we were kind of hungry, so uh, we went into the menu, no problems. And uh, it's a nice place, really nice. The, the the amphitheater is really pretty kick ass. They do a great job with that. But um, we went in there. It's like a food court area, like you know, all kinds of different like food trucks, and there's stands and stuff. There was this place selling pizza by the slice, so I thought, well, let's get a couple slices. We'll get two slices of pizza, two waters. And um, so that's what I ordered, two slices of pepperoni pizza, two waters. You want to guess how much it cost? That's right, $36. I was like, what the? Is this like a joke? Am I on candid camera? $36. And the pizza, I mean, I mean, at least the pizza was... Wait a minute. No, it was terrible. It tasted like store brand frozen pizza. Sorry, I had to, I had to, I had to pause that because of my throats. I'm loaded with pollen. I think I'm at this point. I think I'm like 33 percent pollen. My entire body is like I've I've, I've breathed in so much pollen. Anyway, um, so yeah, it was terrible. It was like it was like store brand pizza, frozen pizza. In a can of that, I don't know, this shit's called Liquid Death or something. It's like some kind of fancy water. It says it's from the Alps. Yeah, right. It's probably municipal water from St. Louis. But anyway, um, so then we went to our seats and we watched that Hardy Heart. Turns out it's John Fogarty's kids, like two, two, two of his sons, and it's a rock band. They sounded pretty good. I didn't know any of the songs, of course. They only played for like a half hour. They were rocking. It was fun. Nah, no issue with them. And then uh, George Thorogood came out. And, um, you know, like I say, that's not really my thing. <sighs> I don't know. It's stupid. I don't really like that kind of shit. But anyway, I don't know. It's like all these drinking songs. and I don't know. It's not really in my wheelhouse. But they were fun. I had a good time with them. I liked them better after I saw them than before. You know, and he kept doing a bunch of hits like, oh, I forgot he did that. Or, you know, like he was playing these songs. I'm like, oh, I forgot about that song. <laughs> you know, so I guess the guy had a bunch of hits. I don't remember. All I remember is Bad to the Bone, but he had a whole bunch of other ones. And he was goofy. He was like, I mean, you could tell he didn't take himself super seriously. He was like kind of goofy. He was like full of these uh, tongue in cheek rock and roll cliches and stuff. It was fun. I like, I had it, I kind of enjoyed him. I thought it was kind of fun. He's a good guitar player. But uh, I liked them better after I saw them than before. So 
Now that I know his shtick and he doesn't take himself seriously, I like him better. You know what I mean? So, so that was fun. And then um, John Fogarty came out and had this little video uh, at the beginning. He was talking about how he got his songs back and he's going out and he's going to do a summer celebration of, of all these great old songs. He's going to do them all. He's, gonna, he's just going to go out and play f- for his fans and do the great old songs from the old days and all this stuff. And, um, and, then, and then the video ended and... Uh, he appears on stage and he's play. He starts playing the opening lick, you know, the opening uh, to uh, "Bad Moon Rising." It's like I got goosebumps. It's like, oh my god, I don't know. I, I get. It was like, I don't know. I had some kind of a, an emotional <laughs> reaction. It's like I can't believe this. I can't believe I'm actually seeing this. You know, it's like when I saw Paul McCartney or when I saw uh, like Tom Petty the, the last time or the Rolling Stones. It's like in the same category, you know. It's like they're absolute rock legends, and I can't believe I'm seeing it. It's like right before me. So that was great. He was fun. He had everybody dancing. There's a bunch of drunk women in there. Everybody's dancing in the aisles. Everybody's singing along. It was a party. It's just like one hit after another after another. It was relentless. He's a hell of a guitar player. I mean, I always heard that he was a good guitar player. He was like playing like Hendrix there for a while. I mean, he was rocking it, and it was real loud. <laughs> I mean, it was blasting near the... felt like the, the, the volume just, you know, climbed throughout the night. By the end, it was, like, blasting. You know, my ears were ringing when we left there. It was fun. It was, like, hit after hit after hit. And then when we were driving home, like, he didn't do this, he didn't do... This. Same with Tom Petty. When we saw Tom Petty, we were like, I don't know, he played forever. Played just just one hit after another and then when you're driving home wait a minute he didn't do this song he didn't do this song <laughs> so many hits that he played forever and he still didn't get them all in it was great I mean, it was so much fun I mean, if you have a chance to see him if you're into that stuff do not hesitate you'll have a blast there's a bunch of drunk women there like old ladies <laughs> what the hell's that what's that about a bunch of old ladies just drunk off their asses I mean, off their asses. I'm serious. And the men were drinking, too. Their their husbands, I guess, or I don't know who they were. You know, they all had, most of them had, uh, uh, like, a husband with them. The men were drinking, too, but they weren't getting all wild. The women were getting, they were swinging for the fences, this thing. They are out there dancing wildly in the, in the, in the you know. And some of them be like, like fall, almost falling down and say, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. They were, we saw them dragging people out of there, you know, like they're like a group. When we were leaving, they had this woman. They had, you know, they had a, a person on one side of her and a person on the other side, and they were just drag, her feet weren't even moving. They were just dragging. Her feet were just like the tops of her feet were just dragging, creating this trail, you know. You know, they're just dragging her out of there. She's smashed. She looked like she was like 67 years old, you know. Like, what the? What is the story with that? Is that just like amateur hour? Is that what that is? Is that just like people that don't generally, it's like that they're not professionals, you know? They, they don't generally drink, so they don't, they don't really know how to calibrate it, you know? Is that what that is? Like, I'm going to go get crazy at this this is going to be so much fun. And they get so smashed, I don't even remember the show, you know. And it was all women. The women were the ones that were like, I never saw any, like, I mean, people were drinking in there. But I didn't see any men that were, like, smashed. I saw a bunch of old women. <laughs> I'm talking 60s, 70s. People in their 60s and 70s. Drunk. Women. I don't know. Can somebody explain that to me? But anyway, it was fun. It was a blast. Everybody had a good time. Uh, it was a party. And uh, he sounded fantastic. He sounds exactly like he did. I mean, and his guitar playing uh, was amazing. I, I mean, I knew he was a good guitarist because he's always on those greatest guitarists of all time list. I didn't really, re- didn't really realize how good he is. Good show. Fun. You know, I, I recommend it if you have an opportunity to see him. So, so that happened. That was a that was a hundred percent grand slam. Good times. We didn't have tr- too much trouble getting out of there either, because we came in so early. We were at the bottom. There's like different lots up the hill. 
you know, up up the mountain. So we're in the lowest one. We had to walk quite a bit, but uh, you know, but when we got to our car, we just drive right out. It was easy. So, so that was fun. That was a hundred percent grand slam. Um, I'm a little long in this, but I have two calls I want to get to. Um, the first one is from my brother Tim, and here it is. Hey Jeff, this is Tim. Hey, I just got done listening to episode 390 where YZ and T Town had called in, uh, and that got me to thinking about concerning that guy with the uh, put back together wrong. The uh, passing gas through your penis thing, I could find humorous, probably. Well, maybe not so much while it's happening, but certainly after the fact. But the other aspect of that, the passing meat, that frightens me. First of all, I don't even understand how that is possible. I mean, why wouldn't he just be clogged up? I mean, he'd have to have some enormous pee holes or something. You know, I mean, how's how's meat going to get through there? I don't think that would work with my wiener. I think I'd be clogged up and they'd have to fish it out some kind of way because I just, I, I don't, I don't, I mean, I just can't imagine if it ever did happen, you know, and I had to go to the emergency room or something, and I have to explain why I'm there. Uh, what brings you in here today, sir? Um, passing ground shock through my wiener. I, I just, uh, it just gives me a full body shiver, if you want to be honest about it. I mean, I don't, I, and I do not understand how uh, something like that could even possibly happen. But I'm assuming that it did. Um, but that's, that's pretty scary. I, I might be able to laugh about that after the fact, but certainly not while it's going on. And I, I don't know. Uh, it depends on how traumatic a, a, an experience it was for me. You know, I may, I may not be able to see the humor in it even after it's all said and done. But, um, anyway, I just, I was just thinking about that since I listened to Wisey's call. And uh, th- those are my thoughts on the subject. I just wanted to share them. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, I I hear what you're saying, and I um, and I never heard of it referred to as ground chuck. I mean, these guys, but uh, you know, I understand why <laughs> it never occurred to me to call it ground chuck. But um, I hear what you're saying. Um, I, I had the same thing. I guess it was just like small little. I mean, I don't think he's like shooting meatballs out his out his schlong, you know. But uh, it's probably just like particles, like small little. <laughs> particles of meat and he sees it floating in there in the toilet you know when he's pissing meat and this guy this poor man's urinating beef you know it's just like little particles floating he's like what is that and it's like oh my god that's hamburger <laughs> you know it's from my hamburger helper it's like he did, it's a wonder he didn't like uh piss a noodle out <laughs> What if that was even possible? Like a like a like a big old flat noodle come out. You're right. I mean, his pee hole must have been. I don't know. He didn't get into all that. He didn't talk. He didn't get into details about his pee hole, as you call it. I don't know. I we didn't get into that. He he just told me he was uh he was urinating meat or beef. I don't know how he put it. He didn't say ground chuck. But I hear what you're saying. Seems like it would get clogged. It's a clogging hazard. When a person is urinating uh, ground beef, that's a clogging hazard. I, I totally agree with you on that. But he didn't say anything about clogging. All he said was he urinated meat. <laughs> so, And then he was p- farting through his penis. This is the things I remember about him. I also remember a bunch of weird stuff he told me about other things in his personal life, which I won't go into right now. And I was like, what the, this guy, whew, mercy. He hadn't worked. You know, I, I haven't seen him in many years, but uh, anyway. So, yeah, I, I had some of the same thoughts, but um, he didn't say anything about clogging. So I assume it's just fine little nodules of beef that came out his wiener as you as you called it so anyway thanks for calling tim i appreciate it this next call is from our old buddy zip producer zip here it is hey jeff k this is zip i'm um, calling about the uh, tv show thing so you talked about hogan's heroes which is an absurd premise because it is kind of like uh, having a tv show about 9-11 right now based on when they made that but 
Uh, on the topic of like Nazi related sitcoms, something you should look into is that in um, England in 1990, which I had to look this up because I, th- I thought it would be way like further in the past than this, but they had a TV show called Hail Honey, I'm Home, um, which was about Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun. Is that his name? You know, whatever. It was stupid. Word. Uh, Hitler and Eva Braun uh, move in next door to a Jewish couple in England. <laughs> Yeah, it's in the Wikipedia page says it's perhaps the world's most tasteless situational comedy, uh, and it got canceled after one episode. So, anywho, on the topic of worst TV shows, probably an unpopular opinion. I hate Friends. Can't stand it. It's just you know I know the one guy's dead now, but any whatever you know, I just hate. I just hated it when I was a kid, and my parents watched it. I hate it now. Um, and then broad topic, I hate. Any healthcare related show, with the exception of Scrubs, Scrubs is more of a comedy, but it, like Grey's Anatomy and Chicago 911 or Hospital or whatever it is, just anything with it's in a hospital, like, I fucking cannot watch it, cannot stand it. But anyway, yeah, look this Hail Honey I'm Home show up. Uh, I just pulled the Wikipedia page up. I, I'm sure you can go on YouTube and find it, but, um, you know, I don't know if you necessarily want to, so. Anyway, have a good one. Bye. Yeah, Hogan's Heroes, my brother, who just, who was just on here talking about Ground Chuck, uh, he said he named Hogan's Heroes as the worst TV show of all time. I think that's a little over the top. I can think of a lot worse than that. But um, that's what But I was talking about in a recent episode about how bizarre it was that there was a sitcom about Nazis 20 years after the war ended like a terrible horrible war like the worst war that you can think of and they made a sitcom out of it like 20 years later and you're right that would be like having a 9-11 sitcom I don't know how that would work but it wouldn't fly people would be freaking furious about it I think I've said freaking like five times in this episode I don't have to get away from that I don't like that <laughs> I feel like I'm overusing that. I don't like it. I should never use it. I don't. I don't like that, and yet I use it all the time. Anyway, so um, but I think people would be up in arms about it, you know. But uh, yeah, it seems bizarre. But uh, anyway, uh, you're talking about this show called Heil Heil Honey. I'm home. <laughs> uh, I, I did. So I I looked that up. I looked it up, like you said on. Uh, Wikipedia, and it's a, and then I I went on YouTube. So it was a, it was a sitcom in England, and uh, it was about Adolf Hitler, Eva Braun, living next door to some couple. I don't, I don't remember their names, the Goldsteins or something. Something that made it obvious that they were Jewish, and um, of course Adolf, you know. Found them annoying. I don't, the whole thing's ridiculous. Like how in the hell? How in the hell? <laughs> what is premise? Yeah, this thing got green lit. Somebody said, "Yeah, let's do it." Let's, 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 that sounds funny, you know. But um, the, the thing about that is, the actual episode, the one episode that was uh, actually aired, is on YouTube, and I watched it. I watched it last night, and uh, it's something. <laughs> I don't know. That's one of those things. Like, like when I first started watching it, it had like this, this you know, bouncy little theme song, and and it looked like some sitcom from like the eighties or something. The opening credits, and uh, you know, and then Hitler's on there, and he's just hamming it up, and everybody, everybody has. It's a British, it's a British show, but all the characters on there had like thick New York accents. It's like very confusing. I'm like, what the? I don't understand this. And then, but then, as I watched, maybe I got five minutes into it. It's like this is a what this is is a parody, a satire of American sitcoms, like old sitcoms. Like uh, I guess it's a combination of like I Love Lucy. There's a lot of the honeymooners in there. And then there's like some of that '70s stuff where they got into like when a when a uh, it, like it had this cranked up laugh track. That's what people you said you hated you hate Friends. 
that, that's one of the things that people always mention about Friends. I had this cranked up laugh track, but um, uh, anyway, uh, I don't get off track. But it had a laugh track, and uh, like when characters would come into the into the scene, the audience would like applaud. That's a seventies thing, you know. So it had all this stuff, and it was so it was just uh, I don't know if it was making fun, but it was like a parody or a satire of American sitcoms, especially uh, I Love Lucy and The Honeymooners. And that's why they had those New York accents. It's like really weird. Um, but so so somebody had this idea, like we should do a parody of American, like old American sitcoms and put every sitcom trope in there. However, the character, the, the main character will be Adolf Hitler. <laughs> like the worst person of the 20th century, the worst person we could think of from the night from the from the 20th century, we'll stick him in there. You know, we'll just have like the this uh, ridiculous, you know, this, this corny, hokey sitcom like the Americans used to make, but we'll put Adolf Hitler in the middle of it. This is the kind of thing. This is the kind of thing you do when you're like out with your buddies and you're you're having a few pops. You come up with ideas like that. Somebody came up with that idea. That's something I might have come up with or a million other people. But this guy somehow got the thing through and a network approved it and the thing got the thing got made and got broadcast. <laughs> Think about that. A sitcom with Adolf Hitler and he's hammer he's like he's like he's basically doing a Jackie Gleason he's like oh and all this stuff and it, he's just like uh, he's like he's Adolf Hitler is the at the center of this thing be surrounded by all these kooky characters Ava Braun you know she's like a Lucille Ball type and uh the neighbors are almost like the Mertzes or maybe even uh what's that guy what's uh, What's the, the the other couple on the honeymooners? I can't remember, but you know what I'm saying. It, it's all set up like that, you know. And there, and uh, and so 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 Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler, ever how you want to say it, is having Neville Chamberlain over right in this episode, <laughs> and he doesn't want the Goldsteins, or well, I don't remember what their names are. Uh, he doesn't want the Goldstein. He tells he tells tells Ava Braun, don't let don't tell. Maria Goldstein or Mary Goldstein or whatever her name is about about this, but Neville Chamberlain's coming over, and she was like, "You didn't tell me that uh, a world leader's coming over, so I could at least take something out of the ice box." <laughs> so I mean, it's like all this. And, um, so uh, anyway, so of course she lets it slip that. Uh, so the the neighbors want to set up their doll niece. They think that uh, you know Neville Chamberlain. Uh, he's he doesn't have a wife, so they're going to set him up. I mean, it's like unbelievable. <laughs> it's like unbelievable. The whole thing is just unbelievable. These, it's just like an old, a classic old sitcom. You know, with Adolf Hitler in the middle of it. You know, there's like one part when he finds out that the uh, the Goldsteins know about about the visit. He's like having like a panic attack, and Ava Braun's like, "Think of positive thoughts. Think of positive thoughts." He's like, he was like, "Oh, Poland, Poland," <laughs> and the and the audience is like roaring with laughter. I'm like, "Oh my God, what in the hell? How did this thing get made? How did it get green lit? How could somebody put money behind this? How did it get on the air?" And of course, it aired one time. The, that episode aired. And people were in an uproar about it, and they canceled it. But there's supposedly there's eight episodes that have been filmed. They filmed eight episodes of this thing. Heil, honey, I'm home. <sighs> That's amazing. I'd like to see all eight of them. If they're, uh, some, those things need to surface. The first one's on YouTube, and then there's like other YouTube uh, like excerpts from. Uh, other episodes that never it's like little snippets it's like there's this one where they're like uh like Adolf and uh Arnie Arnie Goldstein or whatever his name is the next next door neighbor <sighs> they're in some for some reason they're sharing like a fold out bed or something it's ridiculous <laughs> and um you know and and um you know 
and Artie's eating pickles in bed, and Adolph's over there like, oh, my God, you know. It's like unbelievable. How did this get made? Thanks for turning me on to that, Zip. I appreciate that. That was crazy. It's wild. Said you hated Friends. I don't know. I liked it. I, 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 I don't know. It wasn't nearly as in the same league as uh, Seinfeld, but it was like, I don't know, comfort food or something. After you get to know the characters, it's kind of funny. But I can understand why people would hate it. And I'm, I'm with you on the healthcare related shit. I hate that. I, I can, anything healthcare related gives me the heebie jeebies. You probably don't like It's probably a different reason that you dislike it. I don't like all that stuff. I don't want to see people getting hurt and people getting surgeries and shit. Wow, that shit stresses me out. Wow, I don't want to sit down, and, you know, with a, with a big can of Pringles, you know, and, and decompress and watch somebody get open heart surgery. Why? Why would you? That's not. Why? That stuff stresses me out. I don't like medical shit. And I don't want to watch a TV show about it. I'm totally 100% with you on that one, Zip. Thanks for calling. I appreciate it. You guys call back anytime. If you have anything to do, say about, uh, you know, Hitler sitcoms, uh, you know, ground chuck coming out your wiener, and whatever's on your mind, call me up. 570-290-8151 is the number. Call round the clock. It's voicemail. You know, unless it's just racial slurs, unless you just call and just start screaming racial slurs or whatever, it'll almost certainly be uh, used in a future episode, so that's fun. Do it up. Do it today. 570-290-8151. If you want two episodes of this podcast every week instead of a measly one, that's easy to do as well. Head on over to Patreon.com. It's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Jeff K. Sign up for a $4 or more monthly donation, and you'll get an extra episode every week. What do you think about that? That's that's good value. Four bucks, you won't even notice it. Put it on a credit card, it comes out. Helps me a great deal. You won't notice it, and you'll get an extra episode, full-length episode every week. So do that today. Patreon.com slash Jeff K. And surfreportpod.com is the web home of the podcast. Check that out as well. We're at the end of this thing. Thank you guys for listening. I appreciate it. Until next time, which will be over on the Patreon side. Hope you guys have yourselves a fine, fine day. I'll see you. Bye. Bad.